A little birdie told me you've been telling everyone you're tough. Please. You wouldn't know tough if it flying sidekicked you in the face. But do you know who actually are tough? Shaolin monks. These hardy heroes put their bodies through the extremes of head hardening, nail pulling, and even gravity defying stunts. This video isn't for the faint hearted, so take a deep breath and breathe out the bad energy. Let your mind be free as we look at some impossible training methods that make Shaolin masters unbeatable. Shaolin School Before we get stuck into what they do, it's probably best to find out who Shaolin monks really are. To my surprise, the Shaolin Temple wasn't founded by Riza, ODB, and the rest of the Wu-Tang Clan. Oh no, its origins date way back to China in 495 AD, when Emperor Shao Wen ordered the construction of a monastery to preach the teachings of Batuo. Batuo had come to China from India in 464 AD to spread Buddhism, and he became the first abbot, or head monk, at the monastery. Despite numerous attempts to burn it down over the years, the temple still stands strong in the beautiful Song Mountains, Henan, some 1500 years later. Amazingly, it's still in operation as a practicing Buddhist temple, where adaptations on original Shaolin Kung Fu are taught to this day. So what do they actually do? Well, the main pillars in Shaolin culture are Chan Buddhism, martial arts, Buddhist arts, and traditional Chinese medicines, and each monk is tirelessly devoted to developing, researching, and perfecting Shaolin Kung Fu. They wake up every day at 5.30 a.m., go through a rigorous day of training and meditating, then go to bed and do it all again, and again, and again. And if you thought all that training would work up an appetite, well, I've got bad news. There's no golden arches in Shaolin. Monks eat an exclusively vegetarian diet consisting of soups, noodles, and bread. Damn. But if you think these guys are a bunch of tree-hugging sissy boys, I wouldn't jump to any conclusions. You haven't seen anything yet. The Way of the Fist Alright, now we're getting into the juicy stuff you came for. Back when Sensei Carl Douglas said everybody was kung fu fighting, were they really? Because if I did kung fu in a bar, I'd get a felony charge. You see, in the early days of Shaolin, five unique styles of combat were honed, which would assist the monk in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Each style drew inspiration from an animal, tiger, crane, leopard, dragon, and snake. Now, before you start thinking sliding on your belly like a snake is going to win you any battles, it's not. The goal isn't to completely imitate the animal. It's about capturing its nature or temperament. So don't go breathing fire into club trying to impress the cuties. From these original styles, countless other animal styles have come into fruition. Honestly, you name an animal and there will be a kung fu practitioner somewhere who's embodied it. Primarily, Kung Fu isn't about giving your opponent an ass-whooping they'll never forget. Don't worry, that's coming. It's about finding harmony between your inner self and your outer strength, and how that can help you overcome an opponent no matter how big they are. Oh, uh, there's also this one small thing. Alongside their Kung Fu, as part of basic training, all aspiring master monks must specialize in two weapons. Now we're freaking talking. There are 18 weapons in total for a Shaolin monk to choose from, split equally between long weapons and short weapons. From the short weapons, there are swords, sickles, canes, and axes, and from the long weapons, whips, spears, staffs, and forks. Ooh, holy smokes. Near or far, wherever you are, you're always in their range. However, it gets worse. Grandmaster monks are required to have sufficient knowledge of all eight weapons. Ooh. So let me get this straight. Shaolin monks are expertly trained in martial arts and deadly weapons. Well, these guys sound dangerous. But hold tight. The best is yet to come. We've hardly scratched the surface of what these incredible humans can do. First, do you want to achieve internal enlightenment 
and become one with the universe. Sadly, I can't help with that, but I can give you all the wisdom contained in my incredible videos. So hit those like and subscribe buttons to keep up to date with my amazing content. Great. Now for the real spicy stuff. Pinky Power Okay, so we've established that anyone who can wield a sword is dangerous. You probably knew that already though, didn't you? But don't be fooled by a bare-handed monk either. They could do just as much harm with their little finger. What? From a young age, monks begin training their finger strength by poking wooden planks and trees with each finger. Over many years, this builds strength in the fingers until they can strike harder and harder. Eventually, every finger becomes powerful enough to produce huge feats of strength just like this. Man, this guy's doing a handstand on two fingers, and I have to count down from three just to haul myself off the couch. If you think that was impressive, though, get a load of this guy. A former head monk of the Shaolin Temple, Hai Deng, achieved unparalleled mastery of this skill and could support almost his entire weight on just one finger. In recent years, no one has come close to Hai Deng's single-digit abilities, but that's not through lack of trying. This tree in the Shaolin Monastery is filled with holes from decades of students striking it with their fingers. Ah, we Poor tree. And others train by putting bricks on their lap and lifting themselves off the ground. Whoa. I don't want to be Facebook friends with any of these mighty monks. If they sent me a poke, the servers would go down for a week. And then again, maybe no more minion memes wouldn't be such a bad thing. <laughs> no. No banana. Please. No banana. The Final Nail Okay, so as long as you don't get struck by these wushu warriors, you'll be fine, right? Uh, not quite. If a Shaolin monk gets their hands on you even without a smack, slap, or thwack, well, your sorry booty is still being sent through the 36 chambers of pain. They train their grip strength in maybe the most hardcore way I've ever heard, by pulling rusty nails out of a wooden board. Heck yeah! In total, 108 nails are driven into a board, which the students must remove using a combination of their thumb, middle, and pointer finger. And we know how deadly those are. Even so, the rust in the nails causes their skin to blister and crack, making them even harder to grip onto. Only once they can remove all the nails does the monk begin training their ring and pinky fingers. The final test involves removing, wait for it, 1,000 nails hammered deep into the wood. Blimey. When this is complete, it's bad news for any potential opponents. A well-trained monk's fingers are so incredibly strong that if they get a hold of you, there's no wriggling free. Plus, they're expertly trained in finding vulnerable and sensitive nerves around your body. So protect your neck, or they're gonna have you crying in a heap on the floor before you can say pinky promise. Who let the dogs out? So, now you know defeat at the hands of Shaolin monks is inevitable. But what about when they actually make you suffer defeat? <laughs> Get it? Well, these little piggies went to market and brought back a six-pack of nasty. New monk initiates train their tootsies every morning by kicking rocks along the ground barefoot. Ouchies. Think of it like stubbing all of your toes over and over again. In time, the muscles in their feet develop and they're able to kick larger rocks greater distances. The most experienced monks progress to kicking literal boulders. You're probably noticing a pattern about now, right? Many of these Shaolin training methods start off very simple, but by putting in the work every day, those simple actions develop into something exponentially powerful. This is how monks transform their bodies into deadly weapons. If they can kick a boulder any distance at all, then I dread to think how far they could send my little marshmallow hiney. Ooh, it'd be like kicking a soccer ball off a skyscraper. Noggin at the door. Generally taking a blow to the head is a bad idea. Many contact sports are finally waking up to the dangers caused by knocks to the noggin and implementing strategies to avoid serious long-term injuries. But there's no room for this kind of behavior in the Shaolin Temple. Students actually strengthen their skulls by wrapping their head in silk and bouncing their bounces off brick walls. 
Damn. As time passes and they keep up the painful act, they get more used to it, and the silk can be gradually peeled back layer by layer. Eventually, the entire skull is strong enough to hit against the wall without any protection at all. Oh, mother. See, repetitive impacts cause tiny fragments of bone called microfractures to snap away from the outer, more brittle layers of the skull. These fragments then get digested by tiny cells called osteoclasts. When newer cells appear on the bone's surface, they're mineralized by osteoblasts, which help the bones grow back really hard. The more this happens, the stronger the bone becomes, and monks do this across their entire head, strengthening their temples, mouths, and even their eye sockets until all the bone is as strong as iron. Holy smokes, that sounds sore. After years of practice, their heads become hard enough to smash through thick blocks of ice, do this, and even sleep standing on their heads. Ooh, good for them. I can't sleep without my night tea and the cold side of the pillow. Unbelievable strength. I used to think practicing Buddhism was all about being one with nature. However, Shaolin monks will routinely rough up a tree or two for the sake of getting stronger. Young disciples are taught to wrap around a tree sapling and try to pull it out of the ground. Only, it's more difficult than it sounds. And at their tender age, they're not expected to be strong enough to actually succeed. No issues, just give it a few years and they'll grow stronger, right? Uh, it's not that easy. As the junior monk grows, the tree grows alongside them. Over a span of many years, a student will build immense physical strength in their chest, arms, stomach, and back. And one day, they'll be able to shake the trunk with enough force to fell a few leaves. Then, eventually, the monk will grow so strong they can uproot the entire tree. Some very dedicated followers of Shaolin have apparently been able to uproot trees weighing over a staggering 770 pounds. Jeepers creepers. That's like suplexing a grizzly bear. And remember, they would have spent years working on that same tree without so much as a wiggle. I guess in the end, what's good for the monk isn't so good for the trunk. But that's not the only tree-mendous way monks battle with the bark. Check out this unbelievable feat of flexibility by these two initiates. Whoa, I didn't even know getting into that position was possible. By starting flexibility training from an early age, older, more rigid monks can still fold themselves up like this. Now that's a bendy orange pretzel. No amount of yoga during lockdown could let you achieve this. Believe me, I spent many tiresome hours trying to get into that position. No spill thrill. I wish I could pack a little more muscle onto my legs. Alas, I'm built like a refrigerator standing on two straws. There's no skipping leg day for Shaolin monks though. It just looks a little different to how you or I might get a pump on. They practice something called the pillar squat to build their leg endurance. And it's about as simple as it sounds. Squatting on top of two pillars to make it harder. Many also balance a bowl of water on top of their head. Okay, still doesn't sound too bad, right? Well, they sit perfectly still in this position for two hours. Um, what? And to make it even harder, some monks place a bowl of water in each hand, too, which under no circumstances can be spilled. Ooh, that's tough. I'd collapse in a soggy heap after the first 10 seconds. Only falling has pretty serious consequences. Positioned directly beneath the monk's junk in the trunk is a wooden spike. <laughs> so if you fell, you'd be turned into a Shaolin shawarma before you hit the deck. Oh, mother. I guess that's one way to motivate yourself to push just that little bit harder. Hardest of them all. Right, I think I'm finally ready for my big showdown with the Shaolin master. Huh? What? Oh, you've never seen an adorable mascot in a full suit of armor before? It's 2023, get with the times. One thing nobody told me was monks have a special kind of armor themselves. They call it Ti Bu Shan Gong, or Iron Shirt, and it makes them unbelievably resilient to heavy impacts. 
According to Shaolin teachings, by training what Buddhists believe to be the body's internal energy source, a spiritual concept they call qi, the internal flow of energy can be redirected to minimize the damage taken. While, of course, there's little scientific backing to this claim, they do also utilize a mix of movements and power stances to absorb damage and redistribute impact force. Oh, cool. For once, this doesn't sound too brutal. Uh, not quite. They train by laying flat across wooden stumps, as well as having large blocks of granite dumped on top of them. Ugh. Some monks even choose to enhance their training by making a special tincture, like a secret potion, made from herbs and roots that gets applied to the area being trained. These mixtures, sometimes composed of up to 25 different ingredients, help stimulate blood flow, bone strength, or muscle relaxation. Darn, 25 ingredients. Mm -mm. You just know that Shaolin fried chicken would be finger-licking good. Honestly, though, putting yourself through pain just to feel less pain in the future sounds uh, incomprehensibly sucky. And it's never worked for my broken heart. Julia! Why? Lighten the load. As we get older and softer around the middle, we can fall into the trap of stepping on the scales and wishing we were a little lighter. But life's too short to eat bad ice cream, and the Shaolin Temple have found an amazing way to train the body to achieve almost total weightlessness. Once they do, they can achieve way more than holding themselves over the edge of a mountain. It's called Jin Shen Shu, or Skill of Light Body. A new student starts off with a large clay bowl filled with water. They must practice walking around the rim carrying a weighted backpack. Then, on the 21st of each month, some of the water in the bowl is removed, and more weight added to the backpack. Initially, the weight of the water counterbalances the weight of the student, but the less water in the bowl, and the heavier the backpack, the greater the balance required by the monk. Any budding apprentice must practice this skill for months until they can circle the whole rim with a backpack weighing five and a half pounds and the bowl completely empty. Amazing. But this is just the first stage of training. Once they've achieved weightlessness on the bowl, it gets replaced by a wicker basket, and even more weight is added to the backpack. Darn. If I even tried that, I'd be crumpled in the bottom of that container like some dirty undies. Monk Shi Li Liang has spent years mastering this technique, and in 2014, he achieved something out of this world. He ran over 400 feet across the water, supporting his entire weight on thin wooden boards held together by string. Whew. This is only possible if you're really fast and tread incredibly lightly, so your weight passes over each board before it sinks. Color me impressed. And to think the other day, I fell over whilst grating cheese. Wall Walker Sometimes, I get so bored I feel like I could climb the walls. Sadly, I think that's as close as I'll ever get to being a monk. I mean, they can literally climb up walls. Oh, what's that? Gravity? <laughs> Forget all that science and check out how cool this is. Sheesh, that boy is flying. This skill is aptly called walking up a wall. And, as you just saw, it enables the monks to scale any vertical surface with ease. Oh, great. Not only are these boys deadly on the ground, but now they can go airborne, too. What else? Are there submarine monks out there? Uh, that I don't know. What I do know is how they train their vertical leap to be greater than most NBA players. Monks will tie iron weights to their legs and arms before running at a wall. Foot placement is paramount for achieving the greatest height, and once a monk can ascend with apparent ease, the weight is increased. This carries on until one day all the weights are removed so there's nothing holding the monk back. Because they're so used to the additional weight, without it, they can practically fly up the wall effortlessly. Boy, I sure could do with that. Walmart put all my favorite snacks on the top shelf where I can't reach them. Leaping Lizard No, I've just told you how monks scale the wall. But what about if they could stick to it like glue? Surely that's one floating step too far, right? Well, I'll let you be the judge. 
There are rumors of a very difficult skill that even the most advanced monks struggle to master. It goes by many names. Lizard climbs the wall, hanging painting, or climbing a wall. But they all mean the same thing. When mastered, it allows a monk to maneuver around a wall in any direction using only their elbows. Man, that sounds hard. And it is. Supposedly, only two or three out of every 100 people who begin acquiring the basic movements ever achieve full mastery. It's said that by pressing their back against a wall and squeezing their elbows down, the student can raise their body off the floor and fix it in that position. And you know the drill by now, with more practice comes more power. Eventually, a monk will be able to shuffle their body around using just the force in their elbows, wiggling just the way a lizard would. Now this, I gotta see. The only problem is, I couldn't find any record of somebody actually doing it. And believe me, I've looked. Sure, this astronomical skill cap means there may be only a handful of monks who can actually do this, but is it just me who thinks this is a little weird that it only exists in Shaolin books? What do you think? Is this real, or am I right to be skeptical? Let me know down in the comments below. Chand Up Comedian Many of the incredible feats achieved by the students of Shaolin seem impossible, but that's why we love them, isn't it? However, there's one in particular which I think sounds genuinely impossible. The story goes, <clears throat> Some time ago, in the early days of his monk training, Shi He Si hung a heavy weight from an overhanging tree branch on a path he traveled every day. When he passed, he'd jab the weight with his finger to make it swing. Days became months, became years. Yet Shi continued to jab the weight from further and further away until his fingers barely grazed the surface. As he grew stronger and stronger, the weight would swing harder, even though she was barely touching it. Until one day, he didn't touch it at all, but incredibly, the weight still swung. Whoa, this guy must have had superpowers. She began honing his phantom strike, known as the One Finger of Chan, by meditating in a courtyard and striking his fingers toward lit candles. At first, the flames just flickered, but with enough practice, he was able to blow them completely out from 11 feet away. Uh-huh. Really? Then the story goes that she traveled around China, visiting every monastery that he could, and facing any worthy challenger in a fight. No man could defeat him. Rumor was, he could cause severe internal damage to his opponents just by thrusting his finger toward them. Okay, what a bunch of baloney. I know some monks can achieve incredible things, but what this guy claims to have done is literally impossible. Who does he think he is? The Avatar? <laughs> the only way he'll make my insides hurt without touching is from laughter. Manhood of Steel <sighs> Okay dudes, brace yourself. This last training method is a real tearjerker. Now I've never studied martial arts but I do know one reliable fighting style if my opponents bring the ruckus. It's not karate. It's not MMA either. It's kicking my enemy's nethers and running away. Kya! Now, honestly, it's got me out of more pinches than these size nines care to admit. However, out of all the 72 Shaolin arts, some masters walk the path of enlightenment by actively choosing to get hit repeatedly in the you-know-whats. Seriously, it's called the skill of a golden cicada, and a significant part of it supposedly trains the body to live without anxiety. Weird. I think I'd be a lot more anxious if I had to worry about my baby maker getting thwacked every five minutes. Look, I'm no clinical psychologist, but if you have anxiety, this ain't the answer. Period. Anyway, by learning to control the flow of energy around the body, the monk begins by lightly tapping himself with his palm before slowly progressing to harder and harder strikes. Many students of Shaolin spend years of their training outside messing up a tree, and others choose to sit indoors messing up something else. I hope Nirvana's worth it, because I can't think of anything worse. And on that stomach-churning note, we've reached the end of the video. Which of those superhuman Shaolin strengths were your favorite? Let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching.